Hi, welcome back. I'm scientist Kate. This is grade three, weather and climate. Chapter one, lesson two, measuring rainfall. This lesson includes an investigation. And if you wanna do the investigation along with me, you're gonna need some materials. Here's what you'll need. Two identical cups, one container with holes punched in the bottom, a place that's allowed to get wet, like I'm gonna use this bucket, but you can use your kitchen sink or your bathtub or even the sidewalk. And you're also gonna need some water. If you're watching this online, you can pause it and get those materials now. But if you're watching this on TV and you can't pause, that's okay. You can just do this along with me when we get to it. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so in the last lesson, we talked about how we're working with the Wildlife Protection Organization, acting as meteorologists. And meteorologists are scientists who study the weather. And we're gonna be studying the weather of three islands to determine the best place to put a wildlife reserve for orangutans. Remember that a reserve is a protected area of land for animals to live. Now, here are the three islands we looked at last time. Ark Island, Blue Island, and Creek Island. We're looking for a place for the reserve that has a specific type of weather. Do you remember the two weather conditions from the last lesson that we're looking for? If so, say them now. Did you guess hot weather and rainy weather? If so, awesome job remembering. Okay, so I got this email from the Wildlife Protection Organization. It's two meteorologists, that's us, and it's from the Wildlife Protection Organization. The subject is island weather data. Here's what it says. Welcome to the Wildlife Protection Organization team. We're collecting weather data from Ark, Blue, and Creek Islands. A weather report from each island is attached. Ooh, let's check it out. Okay, so here's the island weather report for one single day. You can see it's set up like a table. Here's the information for Ark Island. Here's the information for Blue Island, and here's the information for Creek Island. You can see they've given us two pieces of information about each island. One is the temperature, and the other is precipitation. Hmm, precipitation was one of our words that we studied in the last lesson. Do you remember the four types of precipitation we observed in the video in the last lesson? Say them out loud now if you remember them. The four types of precipitation are rain, snow, sleet, and hail. And if you think about it, rain is the only one that comes out of the sky as a liquid. The other three are all frozen forms of precipitation. Look down this temperature column and see if you see any island that might have snow. Ark Island says an ice cube melted when it was left outside. Blue Island's temperature says 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and Creek Island's temperature says it is hot. Hmm, do any of those sound like places where there might be snow? I don't think so. All of those places sound pretty warm. Now, I want you to ask yourself this question. Which island is hottest? Look over that temperature information and think about which of those islands sounds like it's probably the hottest. I'm gonna do the same thing. Go ahead. Did you decide on the island you think is the hottest? Which island did you pick? I had a hard time deciding which island to pick because I was a little confused by all of the different types of information they were giving us. It says Creek Island is hot and that Blue Island is 95 degrees Fahrenheit, but is Creek Island hotter than 95 degrees Fahrenheit? I don't know, I'm kind of confused. Well, which island is rainiest? Take a look at the precipitation column. Ark Island says it didn't rain much. Blue Island says the rain filled two bowls. And Creek Island says 20 millimeters of rainfall. I'll give you a second to think about which island you think had the most rain. Which island did you pick? I had a hard time picking on the most precipitation as well. 
I mean, how big are the bowls that they used to measure on Blue Island? And when they said that it didn't rain much on Ark Island, how much is not much? I'm kind of confused and I think I need some more information. Today, we're going to investigate this question. How can meteorologists describe weather in a way that helps them make comparisons? Do you remember what a comparison is? When we think about how things are alike or different, we are comparing them. When we think about which island is hottest or rainiest, we are comparing the islands. When we compare the places orangutans live to these islands, we are comparing so we can find the best island for the reserve. All right, we are going to do the investigation. So if you gathered all those materials at the beginning, great. Or you can just follow along with me while I do the investigation. As a reminder, for this hands-on activity, you will need two identical cups, one container with holes punched in the bottom, and a place that's allowed to get wet because we're gonna be pouring some water. Now, to make your container with holes punched in the bottom, I punched holes myself because I'm an adult. You need to get an adult to help you punch holes in the bottom of your container, just to be safe, okay? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up the containers with cup X at one end and cup Y at the other end. Those are the two identical cups that um, I told you to get. So I've marked one X and one Y, and we're gonna put them into the container that we're allowed to get wet. So you can put it again into this bucket, or you can put it into your sink or your bathtub, or you can take them outside, but make sure that they're on a flat surface so that they don't tip over. Then we're going to use the rain cup, and the rain cup is really the container that has the holes punched in the bottom. You're going to pour some water into the rain cup, and you're going to make it rain over the two different places, cup X and cup Y. You can move the rain cup so that the water falls as much or as little into the two cups as you choose, but make sure that you're keeping the water inside of your container so you're not splashing the water all over the place. If you're watching this online and you wanna do this yourself at home, now is a good time to pause and follow the directions that I've put up on the screen here to do the investigation. Once you've gotten some water into your cup X and Y from making it rain, you can unpause and come back and we'll analyze what, what, um, what our observations and our measurements are. So go ahead and pause if you're gonna do this at home. If you're going to follow along with me on the video, here we go. All right, I'm gonna make my screen a little bigger so that you can see what I'm doing. I've got my bucket here, and I've got my two identical cups labeled X and Y. And the reason I've labeled them is to show how they're different. And these are gonna act as two different locations that are receiving rainfall. I'm gonna put them down into my bucket. Let me tilt my camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, hope you can see. All right, now I'm gonna start putting some water into my rain cup with the holes punched in the bottom and I'm going to make it rain. Are you ready? Whoa! <laughs> and if you're doing this at home, you can make the water go as much or as little as you want to. Just try to keep it into the bucket. seems like enough. So I'm just going to set my rain cup over here and I'm going to take my two rain cups out of the bucket. They're a little wet on the bottom. I probably should have had a towel. That's okay. Now I need to think of a way to measure how much water is in each of my cups. Hmm. I need a tool and the way that I was thinking is to use popsicle sticks. So I have a popsicle stick labeled Y. I don't know if you can see that. And I have a popsicle stick labeled X. 
So I'm going to put the popsicle stick labeled Y into the Y cup, and then I'm just going to mark where the water line is. So I've marked where the water line is on popsicle stick Y. And now I'm just going to do the same thing for popsicle stick X. Okay. Now I make this a little darker so that you at home can see. I'm just going to put them side by side so that you can see the difference. Can you see that popsicle stick, or I'm sorry, cup X has more rainfall than cup Y? So I'm, I can compare these two cups by looking at how much rainfall fell. We're going to save this data for later because we're going to compare our data to the data collected by some of my friends. You ready? So because I'm doing this experiment at home, I wanted to invite a couple of my friends to do the same experiment at their houses so we could all compare our data. I asked my friend Mashari and my friend Brooke to do the same exact process we just did here together at their houses and report their data back to me. Mashari told me that she didn't have any popsicle sticks at her house that she could use to measure the depth of the water. So instead, she used pop cubes. And Brooke said she didn't have popsicle sticks or pop cubes at her house, so she chose to measure her water a different way. She got a little tiny cup, and she filled the cup over and over again and counted how many times she could fill the small cup from her big cups in order to measure how much water was in her cup X and her cup Y. So I took all of that data and I put it together into this table. Now take a look at this table. This table shows how we measured, the data we gathered for cup X, how much rain was in cup X, and then the data we gathered for how much rain was in cup Y. You can see that here's my popsicle stick measurements. Here are Mashari's pop cube measurements. So she had three pop cubes high in cup X and two pop cubes high in cup Y. For Brooke, she was able to take the water from cup X and fill a smaller cup two and a half times. And for cup Y, she was able to fill her smaller cup four times. So we all use different methods of measurement in order to compare our cup X and cup Y. If you look at the popsicle stick data, can you tell which of my two cups had the most water? I'll give you a second to look and answer. Yeah, it was cup X. You can clearly see that cup X had more water in it than cup Y. Now look at Mashari's data. Can you tell which of her cups had more water? Yeah, it was cup X as well. So she had three pop cubes high of water in cup X and two pop cubes high of water in cup Y. So cup X had more water. Now look at Brooke's data. Which of her cups, X or Y, had more water in it? Yeah, cup Y. She was able to fill that smaller plastic cup two and a half times with the water that was in cup X, and she could fill it four full times with the water that was in cup Y. So Mashari and I had more water in our cup X, and Brooke had more water in her cup Y. Now, I have a real challenge for you. I want you to look down Cup X's data and decide who, me, Mashari, or Brooke, had the most water in their Cup X. I'll give you a minute to think about it. What did you come up with? Did you have trouble deciding? Yeah, it's pretty hard to compare a popsicle stick to pop cubes to the number of fills. It's really kind of confusing. Now look at cup Y. Can you decide which of us had the most water in our cup Y? Yeah, it's the same problem. It's really hard to compare data when you use all different forms of measurement. So 
We can only compare rainfall amounts that are measured in the same way. Do you think real life meteorologists use tools like popsicle sticks and cups to measure rainfall? Do you have any ideas about how you think meteorologists might measure rainfall? You can tell me. Those are great ideas. Thanks for sharing. Meteorologists live and work all over the world. And so to be able to communicate with each other about how much rain has fallen in an area, they have to use the same type of measurement. But they don't use popsicle sticks and they don't use pop cubes. They actually use a standard unit called a millimeter. And a millimeter is a really tiny amount. So I found this um, tape measure just in a toolbox out in my shed. And on it, there are some standards of measurement. And I wanna show you a millimeter. So I'm gonna get this kind of close to the camera. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna expand the camera so that you can see. And these big one, two, three, those are inches, which you may be familiar in, with measuring in inches. But the millimeters are actually these tiny little guys right here. Deep, deep, down the edge. So millimeters are really small. And so in order to measure how much rain has fallen, meteorologists measure using millimeters this way. So I'm going to measure my cup in millimeters right now. And I'll get back to you with the data that I find. Okay, so I asked Mosheri and Brooke to go back and measure their rainfall in cup X and cup Y using millimeters so that we would have one standard unit of measurement so that we could compare our data. And I added my data in too. So if you look up here in the data chart, you can see that my popsicle data, I have 15 millimeters for cup X and 11 millimeters for cup Y. Mashiri converted her pop cube measurements into 18 millimeters for cup X and 12 millimeters for cup Y. And Brooke converted hers from her tiny plastic cup measurements into 10 millimeters for cup X and 16 millimeters for cup Y. So now I'm gonna ask you, looking down cup X data, who among me, Mashiri, and Brooke had the most water in their cup X? I'll give you a minute to give me your answer. Did you guess Mashiri right off the bat? Yeah, it was so easy to see, to be able to compare 15, 18, and 10, knowing that they're all in the same standard measurement, we know for sure that Mashiri's cup X had the most. Okay, let's look at cup Y. Did you guess who had the most in their cup? Yeah, you didn't even have to guess, did you? You just knew, it was Brooke. She had 16 millimeters, where Mashiri only had 12 and I only had 11. See how much easier it is to compare when we measure everything in a standard measurement? So thinking back to those three island data that we got from the email earlier, do you have any new ideas about how to compare the island's weather? I want you to think about it and tell me. Great ideas. Remember that we're investigating this question. How can meteorologists describe weather in a way that helps them make comparisons? I have some new ideas from our lesson today. And I also have some questions that have popped up. Usually when a scientist is doing science, they get all kinds of new ideas that they wanna write down, but also some new questions arise. So here are my new ideas for today. Scientists use millimeters to measure rainfall so everyone around the world can understand and compare rainfall measurements. And if we want to compare the rainfall of the three islands to find out which one is the rainiest, we need that data in millimeters. Now my questions moving forward for our next lesson, maybe you have the same question as me. Is there a common measurement for temperature? Hmm, definitely something to chew on for next time. All right, this is Scientist Kate, Grade 3 Weather and Climate, Chapter 1, Lesson 2, signing off. We'll see you next time. Bye.